Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be talking about regular expressions again. So if you missed the previous regex videos, I will link some of those in the description. Check those out. Uh, but today, someone asked me a question. Hey, I have a regex. And particularly they were working with pre-commit and they were like, but my, my regex matches itself. How do I how do I not do that? And so I'm going to I'm going to set up an example that looks similar to that and then show you a couple of ways that you can do this and some other situations where this might come up. Uh, cool. So I'm going to start by setting up a Git repository. If you're familiar with the pre-commit framework, it acts on Git and we'll, we'll set up some stuff there. So we'll do git init dot to start a Git repository. And, uh, we're going to make a pre-commit config, pre-commit commit, pre-commit <laughs> config dot yaml. This is how you configure pre-commit. And we're going to set up a local hook, which is going to, in our case, block any commit that has a fix me comment in it. Because uh, we, we don't want, we want to prevent the fix me's from getting into the code base for whatever reason. This is a little bit of a contrived example. Uh, so we'll say no fix me. Uh, we'll have a, a name, no fix me comments. Its entry will be fix me uh, to prevent that particular comment from ending up in the code base. Actually, let's, instead of doing fix me, let's do don't ship. That's another one that uh, is. I feel a little more, uh, a, l a little more reasonable to ban it outright. Um, and so we can set this as our entry because we're going to be using the pygrep language, and that's going to prevent it from, um, from matching that. And we're going to make it only run on text files. So this is how you do that. Am I missing any fields? I don't think so. We'll, we'll find out in a second. Uh, but you would make a commit like this, or you would make a config like this, and oops. And you would add that configuration, and you would go to commit, and no, don't, sh don't ship hook, something like that. And you would notice immediately that, oh crap, um, <laughs> the the hook actually triggers on its own entry. So we, we have a bit of a problem here. Um, let's show that it also triggers on a file that has a don't ship comment in it as well. Don't ship, delete this file. Uh, so if we were to git commit now, you'll see that it does correctly detect the don't ship comment in this file here. But we should fix it so it doesn't detect it, detect it here. Um, and one way that we can do that is with a, um, a regular expression anchor called the, uh, the boundary anchor. And there are two forms of the boundary anchor. So one of them is backslash B. This is um, at a, or an empty string anchor at a word boundary. And if you're familiar, if you're not familiar with anchors, I go over this in the other video, but these are probably the two that you're most familiar with, which is an empty string anchor at the beginning of the string and an empty string anchor at the end of the string. Uh, but we're gonna be using backslash B, which is an empty string anchor at a word boundary. And what a word boundary means is when it switches from being alphanumeric characters to being not alphanumeric characters. Actually, it might just be alpha characters. I'm not sure. Um, but you, you can imagine that there is a word boundary. Oops. Oh boy, what have I done? Oh, I did Windows, Windows key arrow. There we go. Uh, but there is a word boundary sitting right here, for instance. Uh, and so we could put a word boundary character in here, which makes it no longer literally match this string. Um, and that would prevent it. Another, um, you know, character you could use here instead is backslash capital B, which is a uh, non-word boundary. So this says uh, exactly the opposite of backslash B, and you could put this in the middle of your string to do the same. So this this would also solve the problem here. Actually, we'll just show that pre-commit run all files. We'll see that it only matches the t.py. If we did the little little b over here, you'll see it also only matches t.py. Um, but I don't like either of those solutions personally, although I do use both of these a lot. Um, here's another solution that I like a little bit better. This introduces a character class, and this character class only contains one character, so this, this bracketed region here will always match a literal capital D, um, and you'll see that that also works here. And um, this is this is usually what I do, but there's there's a couple other things you can do as well. You could make a trivial group, which uh, also also works. You could even make 
Uh, an empty parenthesis group. <laughs> this one I find a little bit harder to understand what's going on here. But anyway, the, the short and the long of it is there's there's a lot of different ways that you can kind of solve this problem. Um, but um, that's, that's some ways that, that you might do that. Now, uh, for another case that I use, a, that, I, that I run into a lot um, <laughs> when I actually have a regex and I don't want to match the regex itself, is when I'm working with grep and trying to grep processes. Now, I know that there is pgrep, and pgrep works great. Um, I always forget to run pgrep. But what pgrep is doing here is like, which, find all of the processes that match Babby, and this is the, this is the PID that is my text editor right here. However, what I usually do is PSEF and then grep Babby. But you'll notice here that, um, <laughs> of course it also matches, it also matches um, the host name of my, my machine, but you can ignore that. Uh, but you'll see it matches the text editor here, but we also matched the grep process here. We don't, we don't really want that. Um, and so often I'll do, you know, that same hack where I will put one of the characters in a, in a bracket here, and that will make sure that I no longer match the grep process. Um, but anyway, that's that's two places where this might come up, and hopefully this gives you another tool in the toolbox when working with regexes. If you guys have additional comments that you or things that you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.